It's Blanks and Harris, Namaka, Henry, and Wade for Marquette. And Wade will jump at center against Antoine Scott, Roderick Hicks, also Darius Sangata, Craig Dawson, and Josh Howard. And the tip controlled by Wake Forest, Craig Dawson. Let's see what Marquette sets up in initially. Well, Mar Marquette will play a little bit of 3-2 uh, zones, some 2-1-2 zones, some man-to-man, -man, and that's what they're playing right now is man-to-man. -man. Here's Scott along the baseline. Antoine Scott, great improvement from his junior to senior year, and he's having a great start to the season. And Wake Forest with some pressure, a 1-2-2 look in the pressure. Wake Forest pressures from time to time, although they are not the lightning-quick pressure team. But Skip Prosser's Xavier teams were that they can create turnovers even with mild pressure. And they force a turnover there. Uh, Marquette is a team that typically takes fairly good care of the ball. 14.7 turnovers. They force 20 themselves. And it's all about possession, of course. You don't want to be losing the basketball. But if you are going to lose it, that's the way to lose it. You don't let Wake Forest run out and get an easy basket. And Skip Prosser concerned on his side. Talked to him yesterday. He said, we've got to stop turning the ball over ourselves, especially against this team. Really tough matchup for Marquette against Scott inside. Scott, probably the most athletic frontliner on the floor. To the baseline, Josh Howard runs out of room, gets his own rebound, and has it blocked. Odarde Blankson comes up with the block and the foul. Howard, of course, you're running into one of the best offensive rebounders in the ACC. An outstanding offensive rebounder, but in addition to that, a guy who can slash to the basket and create his own shot. And anytime you've got a guy that can get inside the defense, that draws defensive help, that puts people out of position, one of the things it does is cause fouls. And Howard will go to the free throw line. Wake Forest this season, 71% on the foul line. They go to the foul line about even as their opponents, where they'll see the discrepancy when we get to the other end and Marquette. Howard hits a pair. It's 4-0. Wake Forest in the lead here early, and again showing, as Dan said, some pressure in backcourt. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Josh Howard. And many people thought that when Skip Prosser came to Wake Forest as he would input his style, that the person who would benefit the most would be Josh Howard because of his athletic skill. But those are things his style has to be ingrained over time and with people that he goes out and recruits. Howard will have another year under Prosser before it's all over. He's got a whistle and a foul. And Blankson got fouled that time. And one of the things, again, that you see is the what happens when the defense is broken down by somebody on the dribble. That time it was Darius Songaila who was taken to the basket. And normally Songaila is the guy who takes his man to the basket. Now Songaila didn't pick up the foul. Now Roderick Hicks got it. Blanks in a go to the line. Marquette a 68% free throw shooting team but not for lack of trying. They have 278 attempts to end their opponents. 207. That's a wide margin for only 11 games. It is, and one of the reasons for it is that Marquette is not a team that stands outside and shoots the ball. Tom Crean told us yesterday that his team needs to become better at shooting the jump shot. They have a bunch of guys that are very, very good at going to the goal. That's how you draw fouls. That's right. Blankson on for one more. Odardi Blankson on the Country Club Hills, Illinois. And he puts Marquette on the board here for 2 in the game today for defensive purposes was a starter prior to an injury and now he's back Got a stress fracture in his foot in his leg actually here's scott trying to get it done out of the post and has a dug out there by wade and that's classic Dwayne wade what we'll see this afternoon cordell henry passes behind namaka now once scott gets it inside he's likely to keep it down there so the double team ought to be effective and wade did it very well wade penetrates dish and a three-second violation, I believe, is going to be called against John Harris. Harris in the lane a little bit too long, and it's the second turnover for Marquette here early. Of course, a fellow like Tom Crean, who's been an assistant at Michigan State, you expect them to emphasize rebounding, and that's what Harris was trying to do, get in position for the offensive rebound. I think he expected Wade to shoot it. They're a good rebounding team, 36-28 to 28 on their opponent's part. Josh Howard out front, 4-2. Here's Hicks for three, dead on. Oh, that's a great block out. No white shirts anywhere close to getting that ball. Blankson comes up with the rebound. He averages almost four a game. Actually, over that, it's 5.9. And it takes the six. Down low, Henry. Backs out, shot blocked by Hicks, taken by Howard. 
Howard, stutter step dribble out front, and here's Songaila. Off to a great season. Darius down the lane with a drive, and we got a foul out front before the contact. And the foul's against Marquette, and it's going to be Nakama picking it up. Well, Namaka did to Darius Songaila what Songaila just did to him, and that is take him hard to the basket. Songaila is a guy that once he gets it and starts going to the goal, normally he's going to try to finish. Marquette tried to get in position to take the charge, but Namaka fouled way out front. Aluma Namaka from Sweden picking up his first foul, team second. Dawson, three-pointer deep. He gets an average of three a game or close to it, and we've got a foul on the rebounding action against Wake Forest. Fouls on Josh Howard. Guys were <laughs> flying everywhere. Crowd doesn't like the call, but Howard gets the call. It's the second team foul against Wake Forest. And these guys are really, really going after one another. Darius Songaila, Namaka, Howard matched up. Now that was not the foul, if you can imagine that. <laughs> Henry at the top. There'll be a lot of that type of action. Mark, that's a physical team. The two teams that know how important it is to rebound the basketball. Here's Wade. This is what he does best. Penetrate and score at the rim. Wayne Wade ties it up at four. Back the other way, Howard has it on the blind kick out, and he scores. Howard for four, six, four, Wake for it. And Wake likes to get the ball down and take the first good shot. Henry to the foul line, the kick out to Blankson. They don't have an awful lot of people to kick out to. Henry's one of those that Wade usually likes to find. Here comes Broderick Hicks. Broderick Hicks scores, 8-4, Wake Forest. You're right, Steve. Not a lot of three-point shooting out there right at the moment for Marquette, but Diener getting up off the bench, Travis Diener to come into the game, and he's an excellent three-point shooter. Here's Wade on the wing. I want you to talk about some numbers here in a minute. You talked to me about yesterday about where the offense comes from for Marquette. It's not in a conventional manner. There's the steal by Hicks as Harris has trouble with the handle. Songaila up in front. Dawson open three. Got it. And that's where Craig Dawson is so deadly in transition, not as deep as when he took his first three-point basket. Dawson, near steal by Howard. Henry has it in backcourt. They rush across the line. Barely did they get across. They did, and it is Blankson with a nice shot from the baseline under control to the left side. It's 11-6. See, you pressure, and you don't get the steal, and that allows Marquette to get down and get an open one in transition. And the Golden Eagles can play that way. Dawson and Hicks out front. Into Songaila. His fade at the foul line is boarded by Blankson. Here comes Cordell Henry. Through the field. Tries to lay it up on Hicks. And we've got a whistle and a foul coming up. Foul on Harris. That's his second. Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And he's an excellent outside shooter. Tom Crean trying to develop that inside-out game. And the guys on the outside have... Got to dump in some shots. Here's Hicks. Down low. Inside it goes. Danilus is in the ball game. Vitas Danilus is in the ball game for Wake Forest. There's six man off the bench, and Sangaila getting an early rest. Now you don't like it if you skip cross and you put a guy in the game, and the first thing he does is lose it the ball. Danilus has done a lot of good things for this team, but that wasn't one of them. Down low, Wade with the rebound. Tries the stick back. Scott vying for it. Here comes Hicks. Two on two with Dawson on the wing. Nice move by Dawson to free himself up, but Langson will come up with yet another rebound. That was great transition defense by Diener because he made Dawson put the ball on the deck and get inside the three-point line, and that guy is a guy who can put it on the deck. Boy, two steps and a dribble covered all the way from the baseline to the, to the paint. The interesting thing is you want to keep Wade from driving to the basket and you want to make Dawson drive to the basket. So two plays right there, one defensively and then the other offensively. Very effective for Marquette. And now they drop back into the zone. 11-8, Howard shoots over it. Short jumper doesn't go. Wade with the rebound. Good shot fake down inside. Got an offensive foul. Two o'clock on many of these same Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Sports Station. Scott and Howard out front as they try to solve this zone. Danilus at the foul line, and he hits. Vitas Danilus makes it 13-8.
And I think Wake Forest needs to get some contributions off the bench. Only three points off the bench in that loss to St. John's. Here comes Wade. It's an interesting matchup, Dawson against Wade. Scott Merritt is in the ball game as well for Marquette. Wade baseline, blocked from behind, but he's still in enough to get the shot away. And Namaka was able to pick it up and put it in. You bring three guys to the ball. If you can't knock it down from a block shot perspective, somebody on the offensive team is probably going to get that rebound. Luna Nam Namaka. Up front, Kiron Downey is in the ball game now for Wake Forest. Howard has it on the wing. Here comes Howard. David Diggs is in the ball game now for Marquette defensively. Scott at the top against Merritt. Here's Dawson, deep three. His second of the day. Craig Dawson makes it 16-10, Wake Forest. One of the things you have to be able to do defensively is to prevent the other team from getting their most important option at the end of the shot clock. And the shot by Diggs, who's improved his outside shot goes. It's a three-pointer, and it's 16-13. to now, Diener, Diggs, and Henry are 80% of the three-point offense for Marquette, and you got Diener and Diggs in the game at the same time. So Marquette a little bit more dangerous from the outside right at the moment. Scott now has it, baseline. Out of there by Merritt. That's an interesting matchup. Marquette yeah. changing defenses again. They've been in the man-to-man -man the last couple of times, and Wake a little bit slow to recognize. Danilus has his shot blocked. Here comes Wade. This is what Marquette excels at. Wade backs away and hits. Oh, and he's hurt. Angle. He is hurt. And it looks like he's feeling below the knee on his left side. Oh, my. Went up high, came down hard on that shin. We've got a timeout on the court to check his condition. With 11.29 left to go in this first half, it's Wake Forest by one over Marquette. There's Dwayne Wade, and he's headed to the locker room with trainer Steve Condon to see what's wrong with that left leg. And let's see the incident just a moment ago. Right, what you want to watch is the left leg. As he plans, you see the knee right there buckle. Now, the amazing thing is, despite that, and that's got to be very painful, he shoots the ball and makes the shot. This guy is just an outstanding player, and we certainly hope that he's okay. But I'll tell you what, Steve, I've seen enough things like that to know that that kind of an injury where the knee buckles like that can be a very, very dangerous thing. Well, we hope he can come back. Teron Downey is in the ballgame at the point guard now to Dawson. And there's Steve Lepore, who's on the wing. Darius Sangala returns to Vitas Danilus. This is Lepore, excellent outside shooter. So Wake gets some three-pointers out there. 16-15, Wake by one, a triple by Lepore. And it's 19-15. And Lepore came in with the reputation as a three-point shooter and has shot the ball from three-point range horribly. Did a good job when he started at Northwestern and averaged nine points a game before transferring to Wake. Well, they're just waiting for him to start raining the things in the basket. That's a good sign that he makes his first one. Merritt with a hook. It won't work. Namaka battles on the baseline and lost the ball out of bounds. And it's going to be Wake Forest ball. Be out here in this game thus far. Marquette was in his zone the last time, and they were playing it very, very aggressively. And they're still in a 3-2 look. In the lane, Hicks out to Lepore. Diener tracking him. Well, that's a nice job by Diener to get out there and prevent him from shooting the three. Skip pass to Lepore. Again, a good recovery by Namaka. And the shot by Levy doesn't go. Danilus reaches over Diggs, but has it stripped as he brought it down. Gets it back and got fouled. Diener committing the foul. Very often. 15 foul. Inbound Sangaila. Count the basket. Plus the foul. Foul, I believe, to Blankston. And you don't want to put some guy on the free throw line. 82 percent, Dan. No. Nope. All right, now he's made 45 of his last 50. <laughs> now that's up to 90 percent. Diener back to Diggs. And you need the calculator for that. No, it don't. <laughs> Todd Townsend into the ball game. We've got a whistle and a foul coming up on Broderick Hicks. And so Hicks is committed. Hicks. Oh, there's Wade. Good. Good. I'm really glad to see him come back in the game. Because that looked a little. I look a little ugly. Oh, that, that sure did give the, I think, the three letters when I see something like that. And those three letters are ACL, and you hate to think of those in connection with somebody trying to play basketball. The fact that he's back in here 
Good news into Merritt. Nice speed blocked by Danilus. And Levy also in there on the play for Wake Forest. Danilus has been very, very active since he's come in the ball game. Inbounds it comes to Harris. Pass the halfway point in this first half. Cordell Henry returns to the Marquette lineup, and he's got it at the point. Squares off with Hicks. Screen coming from Merrick, slipping through to Wade. Wade adjusts a shot into a pass. Harris can't put it up the first time. The second time, rebounded by Songaila. Hicks across, Levy deep three. Merrick boards the miss. Now the tempo starts to pick up. Here comes Diggs. A race by Levy. What a play by Wake on the baseline. Jamal Levy, a native of Panama, comes up with it. Well, if you're going to play transition defense, lots of times that just involves hustling down the court. Of course, it helps if you can block shots like that, but Levy did a great job to get himself in good position. Steve Lepore picks up the foul. That's his first. It's his second. Second foul. Second foul for Lepore, and that's why he's coming out. Craig Dawson comes back in. And for Wake Forest, that's their fourth team foul with 9.15 left. Diggs on the inbounds. And Sangaila had it on the sideline out of bounds once she caught it. That bailed, that bailed the inbound passer out. You know, you don't want your guy to be passive, but that's one that Sangaila should have just let it go because it was going to be thrown out of bounds. That's right. Here's Merritt inside, and he traveled. And again, Danilus playing defense. He felt Danilus at the back and thought he had to get a little extra footwork. Well, Marquette wants to play quickly, but they don't want to be in a hurry. And here early in the game, they've been in a hurry. A couple of turnovers like that. Down by seven. You can take your time a little bit. Pick up five turns, which is a little unusual for them. Dawson with the three ball. He's not shy. That's his fifth attempt. Henry pushes it up. Thought he saw Harris down low. Songaila with the steal. Here comes Hicks to finish. And Merritt will pick it up. I don't know that that was the right play. He had Dawson open over on the wing. Merritt at the top. Checked by Danilus. Inside it goes now to Harris. Down the lane, Harris and a blocking foul on Songaila. That's going to be his first. And that was a non-shooting foul. Ruled that the contact came before the act of shooting began. That's the 15 foul on Wake. Here's Wade. Headed to the baseline on that left leg. Doesn't get it. The rebound comes out to Henry. Don't want to get as close to Wade as Levy was that time. You want to try to deny him the ball, but once he gets the ball, you want to back off and force him to shoot the outside shot. Namaka. Wade. Levy on the scene, and Wade somehow invented his way to the basket. Okay, so maybe you want to be close to him. 22-17. <laughs> Tom Crean said that one of the facets of his game that Wade has to develop is that pull-up jump shot. That was a circus shot right there, so he's got that one down. Yeah. Tom Crean said uh, the medium jumper and the three-point shot are not there yet, but it's improving. Sangaila against Harris and a foul on Harris, pushing Sangaila before the drive. This will be the 16th foul on Marquette. Points. And 60% from the field. And as uh, Dan hinted, he's very good at the foul line. Well, even though Craig Dawson is such a good three-point shooter, this Wake Forest team gets only about 22% of its points from beyond the three-point arc. The bulk of their scoring, almost 60%, comes from inside the three-point arc. And it's the inside presence of a guy like Songaila that makes that so. Dwayne Wade getting it done for Marquette, has eight points early. And he's done it in a variety of different ways. He has the steal. There it is right there. That gets the break started. A tremendous drive to the basket out of the half-court set. Two of his eight points right there. Has also done a nice job with three rebounds. Rebound of the ball, getting the break started. And gave us a little drama with his sore left leg. And Broderick Hicks comes back and scores for Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons steam ahead here. Up by nine with seven and a half to play. One of the problems for Marquette is they have no points as a result of Wake Forest turnovers yet. And usually Marquette gets some steals and gets the ball that way. There's another traveling violation. That's the seventh turnover now for Marquette. That's unusual for them. And 
They've only forced two for Wake Forest. They normally average 20 turnovers by their opponent. And little, again, a little bit of impatience by Marquette. Wade that time took an early three-pointer. And Wade is not a good enough three-point shooter to be taking a three early in the shot clock. Nice feed, Dawson to Sungaila at the rim. Sungaila now with seven after going five minutes without scoring, and it's 28-17. Here's Wade again. Harris got hung up there with Hicks. Wade tries his way in. We got a whistle. Defending that. Harris at the top. Odell Henry with the handle. Sankala very active on Harris. But other than Wade, Marquette has really had a hard time scoring in the half-court offense, and Sankala just picked up his second foul right there. And from the field over the last five. And one double-double on the season already for the sophomore. Merritt with a three-point play pulls Marquette to within eight. And now some pressure by Marquette. A little 2 1 2 3 quarter court look. He's got to find a way to get Wake Forest to turn it over to him. Underneath, nice pass to Danilus from Frank Dawson. He gathers himself up for his fourth point, 30 to 20. Langston on the charge. Langston has three. And Marquette has yet another turnover. And again, Marquette trying to get the ball down the court quickly, but Josh Howard doing a nice job in transition defense. It's a matter of transition defense, I mean, of hustling back and getting yourself in position. We saw Levy do it before. We saw Howard do it that time. Here's Craig Dawson. Next turn around. Drifts in the lane. Can't make it work. Rebound comes away to Merritt, but Henry takes a timeout as he was headed out of bounds. A heady play by Cordell Henry. Wayne Wade comes into front court now, and here's Cordell Henry for Marquette. Keep possession for the Golden Eagles, who are down 10. They've got to do something to get the tempo of the game turned in their favor. Henry steps behind Danilus, and his shot doesn't go. It's lost out of bounds. Namika was the last one to touch it. Part of the problem for Marquette, even though they're out rebounding Wake Forest 18 to 9, and some of those are offensive rebounds, they haven't been able to turn the offensive rebounds into baskets. Shooting 34% from the floor. Here's Hicks, turned over by Henry. Two on one with Wade and a foul by Craig Dawson. And that's his second free throw shooter. And then you see his season numbers. He was not eligible last season, but Tom Crean. Had him work out with the team and had him work out of a variety of positions, primarily, though, point guard. Well, one of the things that happens is he was a partial qualifier, and that means he didn't get his test scores, so he was allowed to practice with the team. And in that practice, in those practice situations, he played point guard, he played the shooting guard, he played small forward, he played the power forward. He generally tried to play the other team's best guy, and I'll tell you what, he'd have done a very good job. <laughs> He's a pretty good player. Well, he's their, their leading scorer, their leading rebounder. He leads them in assists. Leads them in steals, leads them in block shots. Leads them, does it, huh? leads them in getting to the free throw line. And minutes. Here's Roderick Hicks. Well, if a guy leads you in that many things, you better, you better get him in the game. <laughs> or you won't have him long. Henry on the steal again. That's his second. Helped out by Wade that time. Now, Wake Forest, even though they lost the ball on the Marquette's steal, the white shirts got back very well in transition. Henry to the corner. Wade tries to get inside to the dotted line and doesn't make it go. Rebound underneath Namaka, but a foul coming up against Wake Forest, I believe. No, it's going to be against Marquette. Difficulties for Tom Crean's bunch this afternoon. Here is Danilus. This is the free throw, but Howard in one motion gets the board, kisses the glass, and drops it through. That is not only jumping ability, but it is quick jumping ability. 32-22. Wake Forest still with that 10-point buffer. Wade attacks the rim and scores. Wade with 12. Deacons with an eight-point lead. Well, he's going to get that shot up somehow when he gets close to the basket. <laughs> he says, I'm this close. It's going up there. Here's Lepore. Now Hicks gets to the baseline. Floats one up. Scott tries to make something of it twice. And Namaka comes away with a rebound. Henry sees the floor. Way to finish. No. But it's tipped and taken by Antoine Scott. David Diggs missed the stick back. Well, you had two layups basically missed there. 
McCoy. Line kick out to Hicks for three. Hicks with seven. Wake with an 11 point lead. Boy, and Danilus just got nailed in the side of the head. Oh, boy, he can't see. And Larry Rose is going to take a timeout. For Wake Forest, 6 0 at home and 21 straight wins against non conference opposition. And you look last year, they had a big win here, Dan, in December against uh, Kansas. Wake team that started very, very quickly last year and then tailed off toward the end of the season. Travis Diener has it outside for Marquette. Gets it right back from Diggs. Takes the three. Merritt wrestling with Scott. And the possession arrow will go to Marquette. Here's Namaka. As Marquette operates without Dwayne Wade for a little bit. Taking a rest. He's 5 for 11. Rest of the team 4 for 16. Right. There's not very much balance out there. What's been done offensively for the most part has been done by Wade. Diener across the top of the defense. Here's Merritt inside losing the handle and lost the ball. Now they turned it over that time and you don't want to keep turning it over as we get a look at Wade on the bench. But they did a better job moving the basketball. A whole lot more movement that time. You can see Wade with that left leg stretched out. Remember he hurt that early in the game and that may be causing him some problems now. That's the tenth Marquette turnover. Kicks out front under three to play here in this first half. Howard to Levy. Against the zone. Hicks will shoot over it for three. Henry boards the miss. Wakes hit three three pointers, four three pointers. Marquette with one. Now Marquette is hanging around. They're only down 11 despite the fact that they really have not played very well to this point. Of course, Wake Forest has had a lot to do with that. But the point here is that Marquette, if they get a little run here in the last 225 and a half, they can really make this thing interesting. They denied Marquette. Places where they like to score from, and that is at the rim. Namaka with a medium range jumper, and that's his his fourth point of the afternoon, 35 26. Well, that was a good decision by Henry not to try to take it all the way to the basket, but to draw the defense and then find the open guy. Ma Levy, good size and can handle outside at 6 8. Here's Hicks blocking foul on Cordell Henry. You wonder how he's going to be able to move on it tomorrow. They don't play again until Wednesday when they play Morris Brown. Hicks with the free throw. He's got eight and he leads Wake in scoring. Here comes Wade. Should get up and limp and then kill, kill the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hicks hits them both. And Danilus is getting ready to come back, so the hearing is good. And Skip Prosser got away with Darius Sangala being in the ballgame with the. Two fouls at a key stretch. Actually, Sangala didn't come into the game. They uh, ended up putting Lepore in the game, so they got away with a small lineup. Here's Diener out front. Cordell Henry. Back to Dwayne Wade. Turns. Two shot fakes and a lean in pass to Diener. You know, when Wade penetrates like that, a guy like Diener has to get himself in a place where when he catches it, he can shoot it. The penetrating kick game. Diener, catch and shoot three. He's missed two. Here comes Hicks. Nice lead pass to Howard, and he knows how to do the rest. Josh Howard makes it 39 26. Wake Forest out to their biggest lead. Wade throws it away. Wake Forest defense has been very, very impressive in this first half. The Deacons look just a little quicker to the ball. Roderick Hicks into front court with a minute and eight remaining here in the first half. Antoine Scott has been kind of quiet. They haven't needed an awful lot from him. Levy. And keep in mind in their last game against Wisconsin, Marquette dug themselves a big hole in the first half. Matter of fact, they were down, weren't they down by 18 and came back to within one. And then Wisconsin ran off another nine points. Here's Howard. Levy tried for the rebound. The rebound comes to Merritt. Diener to push. Wade. Against Howard, that's quite a matchup. Wade inside, doesn't get it. Rebound, Danilus. Here comes Hicks, three on two. Cross Howard, final 30 seconds of the half. Scott to finish, but that won't count, I believe. Offensive foul, I believe, called against Josh Howard on the penetration to the basket. Wade doing a nice job stepping in. Little shooter, as we said. Doesn't get it. The rebound scrap four. Downey had it. Merritt's got it. Nobody's got it now. Now we got a jump ball. 
And Danilou says, I'll get in there and get involved. Merritt turned around to try to call timeout, and he's yelling timeout to the official, but he didn't have the ball. That's right. You know, a lot of guys call that time that timeout in that situation, but you have to have the ball to be able to call timeout. It's one of the rules. It is important. Possession arrow to Wake Forest. Deacons will have it. Danilus has five rebounds in this game. They're on Downey at the top. Here's Scott. Down to ten. Hicks turns and fires from three. Danilus scraps for the rebound, but a foul coming up on Merritt. Clock. You may as well take the last shot. This way, regardless of what happens, Marquette's going to get another opportunity. Danilus, two-shot foul here. And so now, with Diener, Diggs, and Henry all in the game at the same time, this is the best three-point shooting lineup that Tom Crean can put out there. Danilus' second shot, boarded by Merritt. Here comes Henry, three seconds. Henry lets it fire. And almost <laughs> dead enough off the rim to fall through. But the first half comes to a close. It's a strong defensive performance by Wake Forest. Wayne Wade doing his best to keep Marquette in here. But the Demon Deacons lead it by 13 at the break here in Winston-Salem. 39-26, Wake Forest at the half. Didn't score in the first half either. And so it's tough when you get two starters who don't score. But Harris was 0 for 3 shooting the ball and had two turnovers, which is why Merritt is starting the second half. There's the weave by Marquette. Henry to the top. Hicks falls through some screens to get out there. And now closes him up so he doesn't have an option and has to call a timeout. Tom Clean not happy with that turn of situation here as they'll take a 30 second timeout. It's almost 80 points a game, Steve. And so the fact that they only scored 26 in the first half isn't really indicative of the way they can score. And if they can get it going offensively, and that's they've got to stop the turnovers. But if they can get it going offensively, 13 is not too big a deficit. 12 turnovers may be tough to overcome. Especially if you look at the efficiency that Wake Forest has turned those into points. Now, when you're only shooting 32 percent, you need to have as many possessions as you can get. Roderick Hicks to Craig Dawson. Here's a three. Got it. His third of the afternoon. Dawson with nine, and Wake's lead gets bigger. 16. We're going to start talking about Wake Forest defense here this afternoon as well. They have denied Marquette the areas that they'd like to shoot from. The only guy that they've had struggled with is this guy right here, but there they get good defensive pressure on him, force a turnover. Can Dawson finish? Howard tries. What a block by Namaka. Coming back the other way, Cordell Henry. Here's Wade. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> 14 points for Wade. He's got to get some help, though, Steve. Into the post, there's the stab by Wade, and the steal finally finished by Merritt. Wade hits the deck. Henry comes out with no numbers. When Wade went down, and he's got that left knee wrapped, and he reaches his hand down for it as he stands out beyond the point arc. Henry now starts the offense. Namaka has it. Back to Wade. Inside to the block. Oh, what a block by Antoine Scott, his second of the game. Dawson heads down court. Hicks waits for the traffic to clear and scores. That's a good job by Hicks. 44-28. Wake Forest just keeps that stiff arm out there. Wake really has done a nice job preventing the penetration and kicking it back out for the jump shot that is a big feature of this Marquette offense. Merritt now on the baseline shoots over Sangaila. Rebound kept alive by Howard. And he'll send Hicks with the outlet. But the problem for Marquette is you don't have enough guys touching the ball per possession. Foul inside. It could be Namaka. Though this is a Wake Forest team as Songaila misses the first one that scores 80 points a game. And so Marquette's problem really has not been on the defensive end as much as on the offensive end. Now on the 39 and a half. A little bit under their average. Sangaila up for one more. One out of two. Sangaila after the rare miss has eight. And here Wake Forest shows that pressure that the, actually they used with some success early in the game. Wade now gets trapped. 
Henry pushes it out. Blankson looking for the alley oop to Merritt. Dawson and Blankson buy for it. And Blankson knocks it out of bounds. Where Wake, where Wake Forest has been able to get the ball to the guys who can score in their scoring positions, Marquette has not been able to accomplish that. Dawson shot. Namaka comes out of there with the ball. Here comes Travis Diener. Wayne Wade over Dawson. And it works. 16 points for Dwayne Wade. 45 30 Wake Forest hey, on, in the lead. Here's Son Guy at the top. I think the key, though, to any Marquette comeback hopes is going to be to get other people involved in the offense. Wade is not going to be able to do it himself. The other guys are tending to stand and watch. Son measures Merritt. Splits the defense and runs right into a steal. Here comes Wade with Diener. The pass back, and Wade can't finish. Scott tips the rebound out. Two Marquette players oh, Wade go into goes the down deck. again. Wade goes down again. And he went head first. <laughs> Wade comes to the sidelines. Son Gila has it. It's been a very tough afternoon for Wade. He's been banged in about every place you can be banged. Dawson. Son Gila baseline shot goes in. He's in double figures for the 12th time this season. And the Deacons cruise ahead by 17. Well, now you've got yourself in a situation if you're Marquette that it's going to be very difficult to come back in the game because Wake is a team that can score. Namaka outside shot a free ball by Aluma Namaka only his third of the season and Namaka has seven and he comes in two for 12 from out there. So if you Wake, you're happy to see him take that shot. Nina tries to steal. Here's the three ball by Broderick Hicks. His second of the day. He's got 14 and Hicks breaking out of a scoring slump over the last three. And we got a whistle. He picks up that foul. Two of Wake Forest field goals have been three pointers from Dawson and Hicks. And if you're going to catch up, you can't be trading baskets with the other guys. Especially if you're getting twos and they're getting threes. Well, that's a bad trade under any sort of is. Down underneath. Nice block on the shot attempt by Harris, but then a double dribble by Howard as he tried to get up in transition. So you mentioned Broderick Hicks in his scoring. Hicks has also done a real nice job running the team. Oh, Darte Blankson with the shot. It's all glass. Hicks in the front court. When Dawson standing over here on this side of the court, jumping up and down, nobody anywhere near him. The convenience store is always open. <laughs> Thinks he is anyway, but, right. but he actually was that time. Howard measuring the baseline, runs into the double team and gets the foul. But this season on the free throw line, 44 percent. He cashes in here for his ninth point. Of the afternoon, nine points, seven rebounds. And as his teammate Darius Songaila has shown you, if you're a fellow like Howard who can get to the free throw line, if you can convert, you can score a lot of points. Ten points, second double figure score, third in fact for Wake Forest, and the Deacons are four for four from the line. So Downey comes in, and Hicks will come out. Teron Downey. And Hicks probably a guy that's really got a tough adjustment trying to play in Skip Prosser's new system. And so Skip Prosser spent a lot of time with Hicks there after just taking a nap. Namaka attacks the rim and then gets fouled. Hicks, man, there's no question. You want to get a guy to come off your bench and give you some kind of a spark. Skip Prosser doesn't necessarily have a guy who's going to come off the bench and give an offensive spark. So a spark in terms of energy or rebounding is what you're looking for. And certainly that's what Dan Luce has done today. Two misses by Namaka. And the rebound comes to Josh Howard. He's working on a double-double. Downey. Some guy across the top. Marquette in there, man. Oh, Howard almost dragged the pivot foot. Shot clock down to 15 as Sangala starts his move and walks with the ball. No basket. Near to the top. Takes it inside. The kickoff to Wade for three. See, they got to be doing that the other way. Wade's the guy that's got to penetrate and kick it back to Diener. Dawson takes a three at the other end. Diener boards the miss, and now the game ratches up its tempo here. This is Harris down the lane to the baseline. Wade for three more other side. 
He's not a real good three-point shooter, only coming into the game at 5 of 13. And Tom Green pointed that out in our conference yesterday. Excuse me, 5 of 18, so really only 28% from beyond the arc coming in. He's missed three today. His best is when he finishes at the rim. Or attacks the lane. Downey to Danilus. Danilus. Cross to Howard, open baseline, shot left short, and Harris comes away with it. Diener sees the floor. Here's Wade for the finish. That's exactly, that's exactly what you're talking about. The ability to get the ball out and get it down to Wade in a position where he can finish. 52-35. Wake Forest still with a pretty healthy lead. Sangaila. Downey looks underneath. Here comes Dawson. Double teamed out of the post. A rare spot for him. Downey's three. Boarded by Namaka. Well, now suddenly you got some guys for Wake Forest taking shots that are not exactly their shot, although you have to have Downey take that one. That was a wide open shot created by pretty good offensive play. Jump stop, pretty effective for Wade, and this time he turns it into a foul on Josh Howard. Foul on Wake Forest, the third personal on Josh Howard, who remains in the game. You see Steve Lepore getting ready to check in. Got a whistle and a foul coming up. And I believe it's on Craig Dawson. No, it's Dan Luce. Good idea. Yep. Not Even if you're exchanging New Year's greetings. <laughs> I don't think that's what he was doing. Almost eight minutes gone in the second half, and Wade Forrest has increased their lead. Now, here's Lepore matched up against Wade. This ought to be an opportunity for Marquette to get the ball to Wade and get him to do some penetration. He either penetrates and finishes himself. His first basket of the afternoon, 52-37. Out here getting a little restless. They want some action from the home team, even though they're up by 15. Hicks. Looks to the baseline. There's the steal intended for Dawson. Diener has it. Three on three break. Almost had no one to finish with. Here's Wade down the lane. Dishes off. And that is Sanders in the ball game. Now Terry Sanders and the ball lost out of bounds. They say Wake Forest hit it last. Official timeout. Timeout on the court with 11.35 left to play in this second half. Wade shows you how you finish at the rim, but Marquette still 15 points back. Wake Forest 52, Marquette 37 here in Winston-Salem. ACC basketball next week on many of these same Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Stations. We'll take you to University Hall in Charlottesville, Virginia. Well, the fourth ranked Virginia Cavaliers hosting NC State. And game time, 2 o'clock. Marquette has been able to force the turnovers, but they haven't been able to take advantage of what they've turned. Here's Wayne Wade. Inside, nice pass ahead to John Harris. And that's Wade really at his best, drawing the defense and kicking the ball. And Marquette making a little bit of a run here. At least has the fans in Joel Coliseum concerned. That's back to the halftime margin of 13 on a 6 0 Marquette run. Here's Craig Dawson tries to slip it inside. That's a dangerous pass and a jump ball with the possession remaining at the Wake Forest end of the court. Everything offensively has really operated around Wade. Wade is great at seeing these openings, and how in the world does he get in there and find, <laughs> find that pass? Tom Crean told us that Wade sees the court very well. He sees everybody on the court very well. And one of the reasons is, as we talked about before, the fact that he had him playing a point guard a lot in practice last year. Now, as we're talking about the point guards, you may have noticed that Henry is sitting over there on the bench. And he's been on that bench during this entire run. And this young man right here, Diener, has done a nice job at the point for Marquette. Over to Adarte Blankson. Now to Travis Diener at the top. Approaching the midway point of this second half, and it's a pivotal couple of possessions coming up for Marquette if they're going to get back in here. Wade with a jumper off the glass. And again, I think that is a very, very difficult matchup for Steve LaCour. He just does not have the foot speed to prevent Wade from going where Wade wants to go. 20 points for Wade. Here's LaCour for three. Had one earlier, didn't go that time. Here's Diener. Sanders, Terry Sanders, their sophomore from Milwaukee. 
You know, this is a Marquette team that's playing with a lot of confidence. It has never looked to me as if they've been discouraged in this game. No. You know, they play in a tough conference. You've got to have some confidence to play in Conference USA with teams like Louisville and Cincinnati. Harris keeps that alive. Harris to Wade. And Wade lost in and out of bounds in a rather spectacular fashion. Well, there's very few things that he does, even a turnover, that he does not do in spectacular fashion. That's right. Lepore comes out, and Josh Howard is in. And that'll help Wade on as far as the defensive matchup against Wade a little bit. Remember, Howard has those three personal fouls. Look at that drought for Wade. That's why this crowd's restless. Hicks. Gets to the baseline. Sangaila wants Howard in the middle. Howard shot partially blocked. Scott cleans it up and has it stripped as he brought it to the floor. The guy who was right in the middle of that whole thing was Diener. He was the guy that disrupted the first shot. Skip pass to Blankson. Diener not scared to take the three and drops it in. And now Marquette is in the hunt. They're within eight. And that's the guy you want shooting the threes. And one of the things that's happened is Skip Prosser calls the timeout. He's going to get a rest here. David Diggs is going to come in. And we got a whistle. And a foul coming up against Marquette, I believe. And it's going to be on Travis Diener. Diener's, held up. Diener's energy has been a big key for this Marquette run right here. Third team foul against Marquette. So neither team in trouble in that situation. Nine to play. Eight-point Wake Forest lead was 117. Dawson to Sangaila, and Harris steps in front of the pass. Diener pushes the floor. Diggs for three. Langson, loose ball foul. Point ball game. Instead, it stays at eight. And let's see what Wake Forest can. Wake Forest take advantage of that. Hicks gives up the ball, and an offensive foul is going to be charged. Intensity. It's not quite as easy for Wake Forest to run the offense. Howard got that foul trying to set a screen. Freshman Jamal Levy comes into the ball game. Active defenders are harder to screen. Pass to Diggs. Into the post. Langson backs down on Sungaila. Diener takes the handoff. He runs into a trap. Ten on the shot clock now. Diener. Langson open three. Got it. It's a five point verdict. So we've had two three pointers by the big guys in the second half. One of them who came in at 28 percent. Blanks in at 21 percent. Coming in. 14. That's only his fourth of the season. And all of a sudden this is a tight ball game. The run now 14 nothing for Marquette. Wake, Wake has been turning it over on offense. You got to get shots. Hicks up and under and put in and cleaned up by Antoine Scott. Scott has been relatively quiet today. Only four points. Up and over. Harris got behind the defense and scores for Marquette. But Harris was behind the defense, jumping up and down, waving his arms. I didn't think they were going to see him. Wayne Wade getting set to check back in now for Marquette. They're doing this with Wade on the sidelines. As you say, they're not going to do much more of it. Scott gets the basket plus the foul on Terry Sanders. Antoine Scott trying to lift the Deacons back into the lead. Antoine Scott has really always been a very, very solid offensive player. You never have been able to give Scott this much time again. Diggs does not get to Scott until after Scott has finished the dribble and is in his shooting motion. Way back in the game. And got to get to Scott quicker than that. They certainly do. Scott to the free throw line. Wake Forest lead is seven. Make it eight. And a timeout. Or rather, yes, it is a timeout as Cordell Henry will check in. Langston made it a five-point game with this three-pointer from the left corner. Right now, Wake Forest lead is eight. They weren't playing very well on the offensive end, and that's been Wake Forest's problem in the second. Wake has turned it over eight times in the second half. Only scored six field goals here. Wake changing defenses. They go into a zone. Nice look inside Wade and a beautiful block by Antoine Scott on Namika's put in in the lane. Levy with key minutes in place of Josh Howard is on the bench with four. 
Hicks at the top. The swing to Scott. He's looking for Songaila, who has a smaller cover. To Songaila again, but Wade knocks it out of bounds. I neglected to mention that that smaller cover was Dwayne Wade. <laughs> <laughs> so it might not be so small. Well, the, what Antoine Scott could see and Darius Songaila could not see was that the defensive help was in good position to come and attack the ball. And if you're passing the ball inside, you're the guy's eyes. The guy can't, Songaila can't see what's going on. You don't want to throw the ball into trouble. Almost into trouble there for Wake Forest near backcourt. Dawson tries to sky it for Scott, but Namaka did a smart play and just took his position away. When Skip Prosser pacing up and down the sidelines, he put his fingers right to his temples as if he had a horrible headache. <laughs> Plays like that will give a coach a headache. 57 49. Now, this is an interesting defensive move right here because right at the moment, Henry's the only real guy that has any sort of a three point game at all. There's the turnover story. Wake Forest turning it over nine times, as Dan mentioned, here in the second half. And Marquette taking better care of the basketball. Henry, three ball, got it. See, now if you're going to play that defense, you've got to know that he's the three point shooter so you don't drop in and defend the penetration and leave him open. For the second time in the second half, Marquette is drawn to within five. Dawson to Levy. Marquette on a 17 5 run. Antoine Scott has been the only deacon to score in that time. Well, and that's, I think, a good place for Wake Forest to go. That's a tough shot right there. Get a look at Sung Island Scott on the inside first. Henry brings him into front court. That basket by Cordell Henry was his first of the game. Skip to Blankson. Now Henry at the top. Tom Green would have liked to have had Henry take the shot at the top when he got it from Wade. When you play off everybody out on the perimeter except for this guy, and there he is again. Another three pointer by Henry, and now it is a two point game. Marquette has crawled out of a 17 point hole, and they are within two. And Skip Prosser is asking him, How can you let that guy shoot the ball? Timeout good question. Called. It's going to be a 30 second timeout here taken by Wake Forest. Skip Prosser wants to talk things over. Watch Cordell Henry, his second straight three. And as you saw on the right hand side of your screen, Henry just runs right past Broderick Hicks, who's turned and looking at the basket. And Skip Prosser's reaction is, oh my, what is going on here? And Skip will have a chat with Broderick Hicks as he came to the sideline. In the scouting report, you go over certain things, and I'm sure the fact that Cordell Henry is such a good three point shooter at 21 of 52 that was covered when you play zone you can't get fixated on the basketball you're sort of defending a position there and particularly when you've got a guy like Henry who's playing outside you know you want to defend Henry outside so you do it you don't turn around and look at the ball Skip Prosser has to come back with Josh Howard that's pretty much the time you'd come back with him at the 441 mark. Wake Forest once up by 17. It was 50 33 at one point. Well, I think what you have to do here is have some guy like Scott handle it in scoring position each possession. Here's Howard. Well, Darty Blankson goes to the court and traveled the call. He had possession of the ball and fell down, and by rule, that is a travel because there's no pivot foot established. Wake gathers around Tom Eads. The official gets to go what the play call is on the inbound. Well, maybe we should uh, go do a quick interview to find out what's going on. <laughs> of course, we wouldn't understand it anyway. No, it's true. You might. There's Hicks near the five second limit. Dawson at the top. Four and a half left to play. Wake Forest once up by 17 has seen all but two of it shrink, and now they turn it over. Oh, Darty Blankson picks up the ball. Here comes Henry. Craig. And Wade. For oh, my. Ties it up with his 22nd point of the day. New ball game with four to play here in Winston-Salem. Well, this looks remarkably like what Marquette did against Wisconsin. They didn't have enough to get it done. Dawson for three. Doesn't go, but a foul coming up, and it's going to be on Blankson. And let's see whether they called the foul against Blankson for fouling Dawson 
or for fouling Hicks, who was, or Howard, excuse me, who was trying to set a screen. And that's going to be his fifth foul. Blankson is going to call it an afternoon at the 351 mark. He fouls out. Now the question is, did he foul the shooter or did he foul the screener? Because he got both of them. <laughs> I think he got the screener. That well, is the 16 had, foul. He had to get through the screener to get to the shooter. So even though he got the both of them, you call the first one. So David Diggs will come in. Diggs, a senior from Dayton, Ohio. He's got a good three-point shot. <laughs> They had the students must be the students are on break here at Wake and they've got a, a, a group of nice young kids in the in probably nobody over 10 years old posing as cheerleaders for Wake Forest. They came out on the court and John Clogger came in and shoot them off. There they are. They're doing a great job this afternoon. They came out and entertained us at halftime. And now we've got a stoppage of play that'll bring looks like it's going to be a. Full timeout taken here by Marquette with 3.51 left to play. Score tied at 57. We'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let's take a look at our advanced auto parts. Best play of the game, and it comes from the hand of Dwayne Wade. And what Marquette has been able to do in the second half, they get the steal. Henry pushes it up, and then you get it to this guy under a full head of steam, and there has been no defense for that by Wake Forest. 22 points for Dwayne Wade. That basket puts us where we are right now, tied up at 57 all. And there's where we stand as far as timeouts. Marquette with a full and two thirties. The possession arrow in their favor. And Wake Forest really struggling to find offense in the half court set. In the first half, they created the turnovers. They created the transition opportunities, which really helped them get some open looks at the basket. But in this half, particularly in the last few minutes, Marquette's defense has been outstanding. Greg Dawson to inbound. And the funny thing about that is it's the Marquette offense that has helped the defense. They have not shot the ball quickly. They have taken better shots. They have made a higher percentage. And therefore, that has limited the Wake Forest ability to get out in transition. Roderick kicks. Hassan Gaila drives the baseline, has the shot blocked by Namaka. Ball lost out of bounds. It'll be Wake Ball. Action is heavy underneath. Again, when Songaila gets the ball in that position, he's shooting it, and Marquette knows that, so they go over with some heavy double team pressure and get the block shot. Roderick Hicks looks for the inbounds. Wants Songaila. Now finally gets him. He was open twice, he probably maintains. A block by Merritt and a foul coming up. It's going to be on Cordell Henry. And once again, we see the guard get down there a little too late. If Songaila has stopped his dribble and is holding the ball, they're not going to let the little guy take it from the big guy. And he gets whistled for his second. That's a 17 foul. Bonus in effect now, one on one for Wake Forest here. Now, Songaila's actually going to shoot two, Steve, because he was in the act of shooting. And that's exactly what Wake Forest wants. They want the big guy at the free throw line. I mean, shoot free throws as well as Songaila. Get the ball down inside. He gets fouled. You got two. 81 percent on the season. Gets both free throws. There has 12 for the day. Wake Forest looking for a little breathing run. They're up by two. And an important possession for Marquette. They came all the way back and tied. Cordell Henry lifts a three. No. Howard boards it. And there's that quick shot without moving the ball, without having anybody in offensive rebounding position that played Marquette in the first half. Here's Howard. Takes it in, drops it baseline. Scott will finish. Wait, getting it done inside. Scott's been their hero with three field goals in the second half. And the crowd lifts. Four point lead and a timeout coming. Tom Crean wants to talk things over. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. Look at Broderick Hicks communicating there with Antoine Scott. Josh Howard does a great job penetrating. When you draw three guys to the ball, somebody's open. And if that's Antoine Scott close to the basket, <laughs> he is very effective in there. 
Howard by the way with a rebound on the previous play has picked up his third double double of the year 10 points 10 rebounds and then of course two assists and that big assist to Antoine Scott to give Wake Forest a four point lead. And here's a look at what's ahead of us as we get ready to turn the calendar into the new year 2002 Virginia hosting Grambling State NC State and Maryland that's coming up on Sunday night Texas A&M and North Carolina at Chapel Hill then on Wednesday the teams start to finish up with their non conference play Yale at Clemson They've got Richmond and Wake Forest here on Wednesday night. Back to live action here in Winston Salem 61 57 Wake Forest in the lead. Battle of two top 25 Titans here. Diggs against the man to man. Wade being checked by Howard. And Wade leans in. No call. They say it was a clean block. And Howard gets the rebound. Wade certainly looking for the foul right there. Hicks coming back the other way. He certainly felt he did everything he could to draw Howard not only into the foul, but his fifth. Here's the pass. The shot by Dawson goes out of bounds. It'll be Marquette Ball. Well, that was indeed interesting. You know, it's so loud in here that you wonder for a minute whether you just didn't hear the whistle. But then I looked at Larry Rose and he indicated clean block, even though there might have been a lot of contact with the body. Diener. Off to Wade. Again driving on Howard. Merritt inside. The ball won't fall, but he'll go on the foul line for two. And that's where Wade has been so effective in the second half, is penetrating into the defense and passing it to his teammates. And that's one where, if you're Marquette, you really need to have Merritt make that shot. Two shot foul for Scott Merritt. The foul is on Sangaila. It's its third. Remember, Josh Howard has four. Minute 59 left to play. And Merritt to the strike. He's got four points on the afternoon. Tom Crean happy that his team has dug itself out of a hole. Now he wants to see it pay it off. from Wauwatosa Wisconsin puts it through and pulls Marquette within two 61 59 under two to play son out at the top here's Hicks almost lost control of it by himself gives to Howard well, now here's where Wake Forest has some problems. Other than Howard, they really don't have anybody who can break down the defender at the end of the shot clock. And they're getting near that now. Eight seconds, three ball by Hicks. Tipped by Scott, taken by Marquette. And a timeout called. No, they say jump ball and possession will go to Marquette. Nice job by Marquette because they, they have prevented Wake Forest, they did on that possession, from allowing Sangaila and Scott to get the ball inside in scoring position, a very fine defensive effort. Possession arrow goes back to Wake. Here's Wade. He tied this game up once. Namaka. Stops, looks for an option. Diener on the wing. That's a good job by Hicks to not get so involved with Namaka that he let Diener get loose for three. Shot clock working down to eight. Wade takes the two and partially blocked it looked like. And Dawson comes away with a miss. Well, Josh Howard may be the best in the ACC at blocking those perimeter shots. And he did it with his fourth foul. Here comes Hicks. Bodies all over the place. Dawson spreads it out. 38 seconds left to go. Wake Forest will call timeout. Well, we've got a 20 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And so for Marquette, if they don't foul or if they don't kick the ball, both of which would cause the shot clock to be reset, then Marquette's going to have about 20 seconds with which to do something. And Skip Prosser knows if he can get a basket here, that'll make it very difficult. And our Pepsi players of the game, well, no contest. Dwayne Wade, 22 points and three rebounds for Marquette for Wake Forest with his third double-double of the season. Josh Howard with 10 points and 11 rebounds.
Josh Howard's primary contributions the last couple of minutes have been defensive contributions, doing a nice job against Dwayne Wade. And a, a key rebound and a big assist to Antoine Scott that resulted in a dunk that gave Wake Forest its 61st point. Right now, they're hoping that that can be parlayed into a win. They had a 17 point lead at one point, Dan, 50 to 33. And things just couldn't go right for Marquette. But Travis Diener's entry into the ball game, he got the offense settled down and scored some key baskets himself. Well, it's not a mistake that Marquette is ranked number 19. You knew they were going to come back. Here comes Sangaila. Nice pass on the shoulder of Scott and a foul coming up. And Scott going to the line. Antoine Scott has some great instincts down inside. The guy he has the ball inside as Sangaila does and he draws the defense. Scott does a great job getting into the open position. Sangaila very fortunate right there because that ball is right by the ear of Travis Diener. Diener may be picking up the foul which would be his third. Wake this afternoon now 13 of 18 from the line. Uh, Scott just missed that one so now this makes it very interesting you missed the first one in that situation the second one becomes very difficult. That's a three point game a one possession game as Scott gets his ninth point of the afternoon 62 59 Wake Forest. Diener and Hicks push and shove in the front court. Wayne Wade out on the wing. Howard measuring him. Wade. To the foul line, the kick out, Diener for three. No. Rebound, Wade with seven seconds. No. Rebound, Craig Dawson. And a foul on the rebound against Marquette. And Wade's still on the floor. More out of disappointment, maybe, than injury. Well, they got exactly what they wanted, and that is the penetration by Wade and Diener with the three point shot. And now Wade limps into front court. He injured that left leg and knee in the first half. Came down kind of funny on it. We all thought the worst. He came back and played and he scored 22 points. We've got a 30 second timeout, I think, taken here by Marquette. You get in a scramble at the end of the game, and it's hard to think of these things. But when Diener misses that three and Wade gets the rebound with seven seconds left in the game, you've got to get the ball back out beyond the three point line for another three. So here, Wade does a great job getting it down inside, getting it to Diener. That's actually a pretty good look for Diener. Now, as Wade gets the ball, you really got to get out beyond the three point line. Tries the two pointer, misses it, and then Diggs picks up the foul. So that means that Dawson will go to the line. He's not gone to the line today on the season. Craig Dawson, a 70% free throw shooter. He gets one of these two and puts Marquette in a very bad spot. If he doesn't, Marquette has got uh, Cardell Henry back into the lineup now, and they've got the several three point threats to tie. Well, the interesting thing about Dawson is he goes to the line. He has played almost as many minutes as Darius Songaila coming into the game. Coming into the game, Songaila at the line 77 times, Dawson only 10. So, yeah, he's 70 percent. He's only been in the line 10 times. Now that's this year. true. That's true. And of course, the difference there is that Songaila gets his work done inside where Dawson is. A three point shooter, which could portend good things for Wake here on this free throw situation. But pressure packed, 3.5 seconds left to go. Well, he only really needs one of these two. And there's the one. Ten points for Craig Dawson. And Dawson's one of those guys, though, that as he shoots more free throws, his percentage goes up because he's an outstanding shooter. From Kinston, North Carolina, a senior. Second shot calmly through just like the first Wake's lead is five and it looks like they'll get the job done. Henry will come into front court. He'll lift the three that will not go and Wake Forest holds off Marquette as Skip Prosser and Tom Green meet at midcourt. The Demon Deacons up their record. At